So that was a practice exercise. I don't know if any of you could write down a few things, but that was the start of it. You really need to write your mission statement before you do anything, by the way, even before you do anything with your stuff, because you, know, you can attack a room full of stuff, but how do you know what to do with it if you don't know what's important to you, right? The only way you're going to know if you're, what's important to you is to find out what your personal mission statement is. So you really need to do your mission statement probably first. I love this. The meaning of life. I, everyone wants to know what the meaning of life is, right? I kind of hinted about that. I was going to give you kind of the meaning of life, too. This is the meaning of life. This is me. This is Victor Frankl. You should, really should read some of his work. He was in a, he's a Nazi death camp survivor and author. And he actually lived in a Nazi death camp and changed his mind in such a way that he still retained control of his life. It's an amazing story. Read what he says. Ultimately, man should not ask what the meaning of life is, but rather must recognize that it is he who is asked. You have to ask yourself what the meaning of life is. Life is. You can't ask someone else, because their meaning of life is probably going to be different than yours, right? In a word, each man is questioned by life. You are questioned by life. You have been born with a DNA, and that DNA has given you blue eyes, five feet ten inches, you know, so many fast twitch fibers, whatever, right? He can only answer life by answering for his own life. To life, he can only respond to being responsible. That's really what it's about. You define your meaning of life. Holy grail number three. The meaning of life is what you say it is. You want an example of a great mission statement? I think read this personal mission statement by Mother Teresa. Of course, most people know who Mother Teresa was. She actually won a Nobel Peace Prize. This is her mission statement. This is it. That's all it is. Remember I said it was short? Her mission statement is to uh, care for the hungry, the naked, the homeless, the crippled, the blind, the leopards, all those people who feel unwanted, unloved, uncared for throughout society, people that have become a burden to the society and are shunned by everyone. That's pretty graphic, very understandable, very simple. She dedicated her life to that. And she won a Nobel Peace Prize for it. The ultimate, you know, kind of affirmation of a person's life in various aspects. Next. <clears throat> The other thing is you have to have a passion for vision. This is, this is true, okay, again, through much study. Individuals, teams, and organizations with a strong sense of mission significantly outperform those without the strength of visions. Notice it says individuals. You can significantly outperform most people in the world if you have a vision. Holy Grail. All right? Vision is the primary motivation for a person. It's sometimes called passion because it's such a motivating force. Vision and passion are very much aligned. You want to know if, if someone is really engaged in what they're doing and really believe in what they're saying. You should hear it in their voice. You should see it in their actions because there's passion to it. Otherwise, they're just a slick salesperson. Right? They're not walking the walk. And it's very important. It's a little life tidbit. You want to really get down to the chase of who really is, you know, believes in what they're doing. It's all about passion, people. Because it relates back to their vision and their mission. So we'll talk about some of these techniques, but you really review your mission and vision every week because it, it changes as you grow as a person. I love this quote. The most pathetic person in the world is someone who has sight but no vision. It's by Helen Keller. Go ahead. <clears throat> okay, habit number three is put first things first. Um, 
effective management is putting first things first. You organize and execute around your priorities. We talked about this a little bit. Um, successful people have a habit of doing what other people fail to do, is what it amounts to, or they don't like to do. And again, with time management, it's not to manage time, it's to manage yourself. That's really what we're talking about here. And we already talked about some of this. Time's inelastic, it's indispensable, and it's irreplaceable. There's nothing you can replace time with, right? It's one of those things that, you know, well, I'm going to trade 24 hours for something else. Well, good luck with that. I'm not sure what you're going to get out of that. And time is perishable. Once it's gone, it's gone. I, that's a scary thought. Time is perishable. That's why you should really think about accounting for your time. OK. OK. This is out of Covey. I'm not going to spend a lot of time with this. But you know, people spend their time in, in many ways. I would imagine that most of you are spending it where it's urgent. You're kind of in a reactive state all the time. You kind of feel out of control. You know that the term paper gets done because it was due. <laughs> Otherwise, it probably never would have gotten done, right? If there wasn't a due date, you probably wouldn't have done it. Why do you think instructors give you due dates? You think if I went up to you and said, I'd like you to turn in a, a term paper this semester, and that was the only instruction, how many people would do it? Oh, it probably wouldn't affect your grade. I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> You don't want other people telling you what your due date is. You want control of your life. Yeah, it might be due by a certain date, but you want to do it on your terms, not on the professor's terms. Right? Don't you want to feel that way? Don't you want to be in the zone? To, be the, to have so much control over your life, and when a professor says, you know, I want this paper next week. I guess I need to rearrange some things. I'm going to get it in a day early. Just to spite you, you know? He's doing this to spite me. I'm going to spite him. I'm going to turn it in a day early. Wow, what a concept, right? That would be pretty cool. Important has to do with results. It contributes to your mission. Not important. Obviously, you want to be where it's important. OK, next slide. <clears throat> so we have urgent, unimportant. Let's just uh, go past this one. We'll quickly. Not urgent, important. Again, these are things that you know are, is really where you want to be. Okay. Look, it's prevention, relationship building, recognizing new opportunities, planning, recreation, vision, perspective, balance, discipline, control, few crises. So you want to be in quadrant two, two, which is not urgent but important. All right. That's where you want to live. So the next one just talks about quadrant three, which is urgent but not important. You know, we don't want to talk about that. You can read about that. Urgent four, obviously, is not urgent, not important. Just look at the graphics. Some guy's sleeping on a park bench, right? <laughs> I mean, it's nice if that's actually relaxing, but if they're not actually, that's kind of their lifestyle. That might